Hello, my name is Alan David Wilson. Um, I'm going to be talking to you today about what does an excellent primary music curriculum look like. Uh, I am a teacher at Monksdown Primary School. Uh, we became a Musical Futures Champion School in very early 2019. Previous to that, I was a secondary music teacher for about five or six years. So the aims of today, basically the aims are to have a look at what vision you might want to set for your primary music curriculum, ways to begin music lessons, looking at the learning environment, the resource management, how you'll manage your resources, how to look at broader musical exposure, and also how skills develop over time. So a primary music vision, the vision will very much depend on your school, on your community, what they actually need. A vision for a primary school in, for example, North Liverpool is very, very different to a primary school that's down the road from Eton. So basically, the first thing, and first and foremost, that I would expect in a music vision would be for the children to enjoy it and to have fun. That goes back to the first quote that I did at the very, very start. If they're not having fun, that's not music because that's why we play music, that's why we listen to music, to enjoy it and to have fun. The children should be able to sing with confidence. That is something that comes with continuous singing, with celebrating singing, catching children doing something good, especially if they're very quiet ones and they're opening their mouths. To learn through doing, we are tactile creatures. If I give a tambourine to an adult, the first thing they start doing is shaking it and playing it because they're not they're not misbehaving, they're doing what humans do. So to learn through doing is so essential, we need to actually incorporate that into as many lessons as possible. And to experience and embrace music from other cultures, to experience a variety of instruments and how to play them, to understand the origins of a piece of music, that is something that I see missed quite a lot and some children do actually need to know what those words mean, they don't understand them naturally. Finally, to include everyone. So looking at ways that we could possibly start a music lesson, the, we want to think about a way that we can excite from the very moment that we begin the actual lesson. Uh, that can be through, uh, again, a variety of ways. It might be that as soon as the children walk in the room or as soon as we get the opportunity to um, engage the children, we have something as simple as um, a YouTube video with say Just Dance or Kids Bop on, something that they can get up and get moving to and really have a go at. Give them a reward of some sort, get them excited, get them wanting to join in. Other ways that you could do it um, is you could have body and vocal warm-ups. Uh, there's a very very famous uh, one out there called Don't Clap This One Back. You could do vocal warm-ups, um, calls and responses between children. If the children have had some prior learning on a song, they could come in and as soon as they walk in the, in the room, they could have the song playing and they need to sing it. And they don't need any introduction because they already know how to do it. And it's just building their confidence, giving them an opportunity to go straight into something they already know. And uh, another option which sometimes I use is uh, open questions that they can walk into. Having a look at a couple here, trying to find out which is the odd one out. You can also have the, the opposite, which ones are the same. You would be surprised how many answers the children come up with. Another one there is connect the pictures, what's linking all these three pictures together. Mr. Wrong says, I love Mr. Wrong because you get everybody always wants to argue with somebody who says that they're right when they're wrong. Thinking about the learning environment, some schools are lucky that they will have an entire large room devoted to music and devoted to instruments. Some schools are not so lucky, the most they have is a music trolley. Take every opportunity you can to try and find a room, talk to the head, talk to whoever you need to, um, start, even if you can't get a room, start off with a little space. Young children are very, very, very tactile. You want to give them the opportunity to touch and feel and experience as many instruments as possible, even if it, that is only just a one-off lesson um, on, say, for example, a trumpet and you've only got one trumpet or you have to borrow a trumpet. Physically looking at a trumpet and feeling it will engage the children so much more than getting a picture of a trumpet on a PowerPoint and saying, this is a trumpet. Think about the posters that you've got uh, hanging around or the pictures that you put on a PowerPoint. 
it, it's all good and well having um, a poster up on the wall showing a variety of string instruments when all the sizes, are, when all the pictures are just cartoons, when they've never even seen a real instrument before. So think about how useful the posters are. Are they giving the information to the children that you want them to learn? Because if they're not, they're just wallpaper. Going on to the next thing, but still referring back to the posters, think about the attention span of children. Um, I know from school myself that um, I didn't always pay a lot of attention to the teacher's explanation because I got bored, but I, was, but I would phase in and out of it, like most children will. Try your best to think about as how you can encourage informal learning through that lack of attention. Just because a child's not paying attention to you, they might be reading a poster in the room um, that shows them the parts of a ukulele that all of a sudden the next thing you go on to is what are the part what is this part of the ukulele called and they know the answer because they've just been staring at the poster even though they might not have been paying attention to you leading on to my next thing after that is praise magpies if you ask a question and a child knows the answer is in the room they know where it is on a poster and they instantly look at that poster they find the answer and then they tell you it you know they haven't known it off by heart but they tell you the answer and you say, where did you learn that? And they say, it was on that poster. Some children will say, he cheated, he looked at the poster. But I will say, that's brilliant, you've done such a good job. You've used your brain to figure out the answer, even though you didn't know it, because the more they get praised for that, the more likely they are to know it off by heart in the future. Looking at just a couple of posters just before we move on, another instrument we use a huge amount in our school is the ukulele. They need to know the part and we can roll them off very, very quickly, especially if in the room. As soon as we say, what are the parts? All the children will look at the poster and they know how to, they know the answers. In addition to this, uh, one of the things that we're seeing in Deep Dive more is how subjects promote each other. This map here, and it is focused entirely on which artists we look at and where they are from. And um, we also have one for the USA and we also have a classical one. And quite often children will say, I've been there or I've done that. And all of a sudden they've got a personal connection to where to the music that they're looking at. Moving on to resource management. Uh, make sure you've got resources, visual resources that are suitable to the children. Musical Futures do some fantastic ones just through Just Play, through Everyone Can Play and the Ukulele Songbook. When you actually get instruments out, take a little bit of time just to discuss the instrument parts very, very quickly so that children have a good knowledge of the instrument. And also try and flash refresh that every lesson, just so that they don't forget these things. Uh, have a chat about uh, respecting the instruments, what you can do with them, what you can't do with them, what parts you can tap or, or hit more heavily than other parts, what you shouldn't pull on, what you shouldn't twist, what you shouldn't turn, and also what you should do if you have to leave the room for any reason, where you should put the instrument, uh, how you should take care of it. A lot of people uh, like when they distribute instruments to have silence and in my personal view that's wasted time because that's time when children could be experiencing the instruments by actually playing it what they want to play and just getting that silliness out of their system a little bit. But likewise you can also spot children doing good things and actually having a go at the skills that you might have just spoken to them about doing and getting a head start on the lesson before everybody else. Finally, make sure that you've got left-handed instruments because you don't want left-handed children to miss out or have or find it difficult. Thinking about broader musical exposure though is very important because we can teach them to play instruments but we also need to teach them that things like classical music are not boring, it's not old, it doesn't have an expiration date and yes there are there is some rather boring classical music out there but likewise there are some classical music with some incredible features and if you listen very carefully you'll pick up on it very quickly by listening to classical music which are the more interesting pieces of music even slow pieces can be very interesting the skills that they've learned through uh, learning through lis listening to popular music in terms of the tempo and the texture can all be exported quite easily over to classical music with just a little bit of help. Have them think about the music that they can hear. What, what is their opinion? It's absolutely fine to ask about somebody's opinion. Not everybody likes, to, likes the taste of Marmite. And it's fine so long as you can justify your opinion. You could even have children actually draw to music or write a story to music. It's incredible how much of 
a trigger music can be for writing an amazing story. Finally, these listening skills can actually also be exported not just to classical music but to actually modern music from other cultures. Finally, we're just going to very quickly look at the development of skills. From reception, children would basically start from clapping to a pulse and they would have experience of some percussion instruments and the first thing that you'd want to do is move that is make sure that that pulse is steady that they can clap to a pulse before moving on to untuned instruments because you always lose the pulse I don't know what it is you always lose the pulse as soon as you introduce an instrument for the first time once they can play their untuned instruments to a pulse and to probably some simple rhythms you can then introduce tuned instruments to a pulse and start to coordinate chords and develop dexterous abilities to actually play certain chords on either the glockenspiel or on ukulele it might be that they start off with single finger chords and then move on to using two fingers and then move on to three it might be that some children stick on simpler ideas whilst other children move on to more complex ideas everyone can play together it's just that the skills are being diversified not the task as children get older they'd then be able to coordinate more complex chords they'd be able to add more complex rhythms and change rhythms throughout a piece of music and also their vocabulary would, would be able to develop so instead of just saying fast and slow they would be able to say allegro and lento instead of saying very loud and quiet they could say piano and fortissimo so having a quick look we're going to have a very quick look at two clips the first unit we're going to look at they've just only picked up for a ukulele for the first time it's been scaffolded very carefully they start off by doing actual body effects and sound effects to the music They then move on to clapping the rhythm, clapping the pulse of the music. After which they then have a go at trying to play their instruments to the pulse of the music. This next clip is, year, is a year four class where you can see that they've now developed these dexterous abilities to play their instrument. They can play it very steadily to a pulse, they can use their fingers to play three different chords and they can also hold their own part as well as play along with other people. might notice on the keyboards some of them are doing different amounts of fingers for each for each chord so that brings me back to the very start what does an excellent primary music curriculum look like well it looks like a lot of fun uh, it looks like a lot of excitement everybody is included no matter how skilled the person is and it's a cause for excitement in the school thank you very much